everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney, if you don't know me already, and on my channel I react to drum court international videos, military videos, and sport videos, and other stuff as well, but mostly surrounding America. So if you want to get a New Zealander's perspective, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, we have a video from Trey. Thank you so much to Trey for recommending this video. This video is called The Only Woman to be Awarded the Medal of Honor. This video has been done by the history guy. History deserves to be remembered definitely go check out his channel he's got a lot of subscribers so I'm sure this is a good history channel um, the only woman to be awarded the Medal of Honor I'm surprised that there's not more honestly but yeah let's let's get into it let's learn something new let me know what you guys think down below um, I love videos like this I love learning new things especially about the military so yeah let's get into the video <laughs> I'm the history guy. I have a degree in history and I love history. And if you love history too, this is the channel for you. The Medal of Honor, the United States' highest award for valor, was established by the United States Army in 1862 to recognize those soldiers who distinguished themselves by gallantry and intrepidity in combat with an enemy of the United States. Since that time, 3,459 Medals of Honor have been awarded, and only one has gone to a woman, Dr. Mary Edwards Walker, and hers is a story worth remembering. Mary Edwards Walker was born in 1832 in upstate New York, the youngest of seven children. Her parents were farmers and free thinkers. The free thought movement was a movement that challenged authority and tradition and thought that truth should be derived from logic and reason. And it was that upbringing that not only allowed her to escape traditional gender roles of her time, but to develop a fierce sense of independence and justice. Mary's parents were determined to give all of their children a good education, and she studied at Valley Seminary in Fulton, New York. She always had an interest in physiology and anatomy, and so she worked as a teacher in order to earn enough money to be able to attend medical school, graduating with honors from Syracuse Medical College in 1855, the only woman in her class. She struggled, though, wow. to build a successful practice, as female doctors were very rare in that time and often not trusted. When the war started, she volunteered with the Union Army, seeking a commission as a field surgeon. But the Union Army didn't hire female surgeons, and so she was only allowed to serve as a nurse, which is how she served after the Battle of First Bull Run. She then started volunteering her services as a field surgeon and treated soldiers after the battles of Fredericksburg and Chickamauga. But finally, in 1863, she was hired as a contracting acting assistant surgeon, the first female surgeon in the Union Army, with the pay of a lieutenant, although she was still a civilian. She didn't much care about rules or the enemy lines. She would go where she needed to go to treat people, and she would frequently travel behind enemy lines to treat civilians in need, say to deliver a baby or treat someone that was sick. And that's what she was doing in April of 1864 when she was captured and arrested by the Confederate Army as a spy. She was held as a prisoner of war until August of that year when she was finally exchanged. She continued in federal service and was made acting assistant surgeon to Ohio's 52nd Infantry Regiment. She also managed a hospital for female prisoners and later managed an orphanage. She was recommended for the Medal of Honor by General William Tecumseh Sherman and General George Henry Thomas, the Rock of Chickamauga. There's no record of the original nomination, but when the medal was awarded by President Andrew Johnson in 1865, it commended her because she dedicated herself with patriotic zeal to the sick and wounded soldiers, both in the field and in the hospital, to the detriment of her own health. She always said that she got the award because she was the only doctor brave enough to go behind enemy lines to treat people. Throughout her life, she showed the independent thought of her upbringing, and one of her great causes was dress reform. She believed that women's fashion of the day was injurious to health. She complained that corsets were restricting and that large skirts with multiple petticoats were not only uncomfortable and restricting, but they also collected dust and dirt. 
She wrote two books on the subject of dress reform, complaining that women's fashion was not just dangerous to the health, but also expensive. She would often dress in a mid-length skirt and men's trousers, which she felt was much more practical and protected the woman's modesty. But later in life, she would often give speeches in full men's formal dress attire. She said, I don't wear men's clothes, I wear my own clothes. Wow. While she was passionate about that cause, it was one of many. She was also part of the temperance movement. She was an abolitionist and she was a suffragette and she testified before Congress several times on the issue of women's suffrage. In 1917, the Army did a review of their Medal of Honor roles and removed 911 names, including Mary Edwards Walker. The reason they revoked her medal was that she was actually a civilian at the time and that her deeds were oh not God. in combat. But her medal was oh returned God. posthumously by Jimmy Carter in 1977. In her life, she had so many causes. For example, during the war, she realized that there were lots of women who were coming to Washington, D.C. to visit injured soldiers, brothers or husbands. And so she started a society to help women who were visiting the Capitol find a safe place to stay and to find their loved ones in all the many area hospitals. And after the war, she passionately advocated to provide pensions to Civil War nurses and argued that they should be given the right to vote in gratitude for their service. All her life, she had to struggle to make a living. She was never able to establish a successful medical practice because, sadly, in her time, people just did not trust female physicians. She finally passed away on the family farm in 1919 at the age of 86. Even in her time, she was more known for her eccentricities than her accomplishments, and she's largely forgotten today. And that is just wrong because her accomplishments were astounding, especially with what she had to face in her day. And darn it, the, the only female winner of the Medal of Honor deserves to be remembered. I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. That's if you did really enjoy it, then just click the yeah. thumbs up button that is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in the comment it section and really I will be happy to respond. It is really, really interesting. Wow. What a life. What a life she lived. You know, being a female back then and going into not only medical school, but also the military as well. I think it said that she wanted to be on the front lines or whatever. Um, but she wasn't allowed to, so she did the next best thing, which was nursing and the fact that, you know, she went over enemy lines and put her life in danger to help her fellow soldiers. Well, not fellow soldiers, because she was technically not a soldier, right? Um, that's really interesting that um, she was given the Medal of Honor, but then it was retracted and then given back to her, right? Right, because she was a contractor. She wasn't necessarily in the army right i don't know i just find that so inspiring i don't know i think that's what you would call you know in the modern day a bad ass woman like she fought against all of the stereotypes and yeah she really got stuck in and put her life at risk for soldiers who would otherwise die or women who were giving birth across the enemy lines like that's crazy what a brave lady sounds like she's did sounds like she's done so much in her life and she probably paved the way for a lot of like woman progression in society what a brave brave woman i'm glad that she got it back i need to learn more about her and exactly what the stories are about her going behind enemy lines and stuff like that because obviously this is just a five minute portion of who she is like her whole life and she sounds like a really really interesting lady and i think there's much much more to her life obviously um so i'm definitely gonna check more of her out let me know what you guys think about this video down below um super super inspiring but yeah thank you so much to trey for recommending this video again i love 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 videos like this i'm definitely gonna give this video a subscribe um so thank you so much for tuning into today's video guys i really really appreciate you being here hopefully i can catch you in my next video so definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you all in my next video bye guys mm.